cat here, man. Look. You can write your name there. That was the accident. Oh yeah, it is one. <laughs> Check out this electric supermoto, man! Ah! Catch here, man! Whoa! Finally here to see this monster, man! Whoa! How do you call this sketch? Uh, on YouTube, it's the 50 kilowatt electric supermoto. Oh yeah! Whoa! Look at these cables here, man! Wow! So can you, you know, like, I'm gonna bombard you with questions here, sure. man. Sure. <laughs> Are you okay answering questions? All right, let's go. <laughs> All right, so. Tell us a story about this bike. So this was uh, like a normal petrol bike. And you want to make a road legal. And you're like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go through all registration. So, and then you're talking to the engineer from the very beginning. Like, uh, I wanted to get a frame that was road registered. So it's a CRFX. It comes with a VIN number. It had indicators, headlights, all that sort of stuff. Um, Less dramas <laughs> than getting a dirt bike and stuff from scratch. We started out with the plan to make it road registerable so when we did the motor when we did all the batteries when we did the cooling system we didn't touch the frame so the frame hasn't been cut the frame hasn't been adjusted at all because we didn't cut the frame it's just a electric engine conversion it's not a brand new bike a lot easier <laughs> it's literally uh uh, a CRFX with an electric motor. Less engineering work because they charge. Anything you do is like oh, yeah. $3,000 inspection. What about the noise? Like in, in oh, the paperwork? The beam ratings. Yeah, they, yeah. they still need to like, oh, we need to still need to test. You're like, man, it's electric. Yeah, it's just, it just came down as chain noise. So at the moment it's just chain noise, right? <laughs> yeah, just, just chain noise now. Um, I could make it quieter with a belt, but uh, I would have to rearrange the swing arm, and I'm really happy with this 520 chain. So. Yeah, so belt, or so, there's some zero motorcycles. Some people say, man, yeah, I went to do a wheelie, and then the belt just went bang! Like, yeah, yeah, I mean, a lot of Harleys run belts, but they've got to be quite thick for the for the tension. And this... this like a... Like exactly, yeah. Monster. Uh, and the motor has so much torque that when it grips, uh, it really transfers that torque through the chain. So I wanted to keep a 520. I've got a 520 X-ring chain um, just to deal with that, that torque. Well, I noticed when I put the bigger sprocket on the front, it's much quieter. So the, for me, the tightness of the chain wrap around the front sprocket is directly proportional to the amount of noise that it makes. Um, yeah, it the is. The rear sprocket's quite quiet, but I've got a small one on the front at the moment. So what's the ratio at the moment here? Like, what's the size of the rear sprocket? Um, the rear is a 72. 72. Um, so I think I'm at 7 to 1 at the moment. Um, but I've got, a, I've got a 66 and a 55 for the rear, so I've got all different sizes. This one is set up for a race. Down here at the Supermoto Champions. They've just added electric bikes to the Australian Motorcycling Manual. We can run electric bikes now, which is amazing. The power has to be limited at 45 kilowatts, so I've turned this down, and then it's eligible to compete in the competitive classes at the Australian Supermoto.
be able to be competitive against petrol bikes on the supermoto track. The bike is, I'm not personally, but uh, <laughs> with, with, with a good rider, the bike would be amazing. So <laughs> the next supermoto champions is coming up, and I want to get, um, I want to give the bike to someone much, much better than me to really see what it can do. Um, Push you hard, yeah. Yeah, just, I mean, the bike is better than I am. So out of corners, it's kicking out, it's sliding, like it, it's. You need to be like a proper, proper racer, like yeah, pushing. Yeah. And, then, and they've got to have a bit of experience with the bike because it's got so much torque. Even though there's no clutch, if you roll it on too hard, it'll it'll kick out on you. So, <laughs> um, but if you get it right, bullet. It's good, yeah. <laughs> right. So let's talk about the about the motor, battery, everything here. So we see here like five really thick. Uh, high voltage cables, the orange man, the orange means high voltage, don't touch, don't cut. Yeah. So what, why do you have five? I'm just guessing here, two for battery, three for phase? Yeah, so we've got we've got the two that come from the battery here, they go up to the controller which is mounted uh, under the seat. You can see it. Uh, that's all hidden, so you're going oh, to be able Ninja to see man, ninja work. <laughs> um, they go up into the controller uh, as DC, and then the controller puts it into uh, a three phase AC, and then that shoots it back out down here, around the front and into the motor, so. Right, so, and then goes all the way here, so the motor is this guy here, huh? Yep, so here's the two coming out of the battery, and there's the three coming back in down to the motor. What have you got inside here, conductor? Uh, yeah, so there's two bus bars that run down the middle. Um, there's three three separate battery packs, so there's battery pack one, battery pack two over here, and then the centre battery pack is the last one, um, and they're in series. So the centre battery is this one here, huh? Yep, the centre battery goes from there to there, down the middle. Cool, so and this is all a custom made, right? Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> so tell us the story, like, so show us the original tank. This one, do you still have the original? Um, I don't have the Same original, one. but the, there's another bike we're going to talk about. <laughs> so, the original tank was a little bit too low for us. Um, it had the same fairing mounts, but it didn't give me enough height for the uh, battery. So, I called up I called up a, uh, a fabricator here. His name is Michael Flynn, that's his name here. Um, mm. He's an absolute gun, and he Genius. came around and we sketched it up and we made it all out of cardboard. Um, and and he then came he, up with he that. took the cardboard away and he, he made it into this. So, he actually made the uh, the tank and the battery boxes and the mounts and everything so yeah. he did a really good job with that hmm, so what do you got here is this for petrol the, yeah this is the cooling tank so, ooh, so this is a cool hey, it looks very friendly. clean man so you don't it's have any chemicals there no chemicals mm, do it again do it again tastes like tastes like metal but <laughs> well, let's see it's good for you hey it's nice and warm mm. so this oh, it is, tastes like water this is the. Uh, this only cools the controller. The motor's air cooled, but the controller is water cooled. And this goes through a cooling jacket and then down the front. Yeah, there's some like cooling. Is it? The, yeah, that's for the cooling. Yeah, this yeah. is cooling. And then um, these are all aeroflow hoses. So um, goes down here, up into the controller, and, and then down through a radiator at the front. So the radiator doesn't have any fan, right? No, no fans. Um, because it's with such a little pit, right? Yeah, well, with a petrol bike, you're. When you're idling with a petrol bike, you're always still making heat. But with an electric controller, when you're idling, you're You'd... not making any more heat. So <laughs> the bike is just doing nothing. It cools <laughs> down quite quickly. Beautiful, man. It's... Easy to drain, easy to work on. Yeah, if you ever get stuck in a desert, you've got a bit of water. <laughs> so hang on, what's the total weight of your bike? So the total weight of that bike there is 115 kilos. What's the original petrol? The original petrol is 118 kilos. Yeah, so this one's actually very, very slightly lighter. In fact, we planned it to be lighter, but then I went with a thicker gauge cable, <laughs> which actually just put the weight up over the top with the extra It's cover. a bit overkill, but it's awesome, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> and the engine mounts, which is over here. So it's made by Mr. Matt. Yeah, that's it. So um, Mr. Matt. <laughs> Matt Eklund from uh, Endless Sphere, he did all the machining and did the engine plates, um, and the, it's, um, it's just such a amazing job amazing art is this one made by hand or laser i think this was laser cut and then he's done a lot of stuff by hand as well like the, 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 the finishing the finishing yeah wow. um, but because we did it like this and we didn't cut the frame all the mounting points it are, saved you so much money doing yeah, these, uh, all the mounting time. points are the original frame so it, it as far as engineering is concerned it's just an engine original yeah. it's, a, it's like just like the original so yeah we weren't cutting frames we're not welding frames um everything's structurally sound um it's made it a lot, a lot cleaner install as well, thanks to Matt. We had, actually, we've got a, uh, an engine number we had to stamp on this engine. <laughs> oh. Oh, it might be on the other side, actually. <laughs> so we had to get a... Oh, right. We had to get an engine number. <laughs> oh. It's just so you match the paperwork for petrol bikes. Yeah, so... Because so that's what I noticed. All the conversions, like, they still old school. It's like, well, 
in the the interesting thing is in the registration you have to choose how many you still have to choose how many cylinders i'm like none i don't have any cylinders so when you crash the bike sideways because like when you're building this bike here i was like eh, if he crashed sideways it's gonna just smash the battery hopefully he got a really thick box here so like you, you stack the bike sideways and nothing happened all the time yeah so i've got a slider here um this slider here pretty much takes the brute of the, the brunt of the force and fall over so the contact points are here 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 the peg, Avoiding the battery. The yeah, sure. It's, it's a damage yeah, here. Yeah, like, there's some damage here. Like yeah. on the other side. It's here. all scuffed up. Yeah, it's, nice. Uh, yeah, look. <laughs> sliders have been used a few times. Yeah. <laughs> Slid down the track. No, but uh, the handlebar is the best. This, this one's ground off. <laughs> so, the handlebar. Show the handlebar. So thanks to. Yeah, that's my favorite. <laughs> thanks to Big Knob Sliders, they've they've saved the frame quite a few times. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> but so the batteries are. I'm pretty much safe. But when you ma when you're making the bike, did you you kind of guessing or you well, actually? We, we ran we ran the figures basically because if you draw a straight line from like the absolute lowest the bike can get is a straight line from from the slider up to the handlebars. So uh, we just angled the batteries back enough that they weren't out past that center line. So it's worked out quite well, and it, it's been certainly crash tested. More yeah, than now, more yeah, 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 sure. Probably ten crashes now, not, not just me, some other riders. What's the voltage of the battery here, then? So this battery is the battery is actually 92 volts. Mm, um, nominal. 92 volts full. Full. Um, so it was made by Chris Jones. Um, I got one too. We we got the batteries all together. Oh yeah, the same battery. <laughs> I got yeah. for my truck. I got for your your, your um, this beauty. Huh? And this, this battery, even at even at full power, um, which is 54 kilowatts actually, it doesn't even have a doesn't even think twice. Um, Lipo, man. It's just an absolute beast of a battery. Um, Especially because the controller, its maximum voltage is 89, or it's actually maximum voltage is 90. So, so you're not really pushing the battery so to no, 4.2? Bat no, the batteries are actually only charged to 4.1. So this one's um, going to last forever? Yeah, and they are, they've been balanced for over a year now. Consistent riding, I balance manually. Yeah, what's the BMS here? Man? Well, I will... I'm okay, t t tell your frustration, man. Just speed it out. Okay, so Do you love BMS or you're scared of I, BMS? I think you need a very good BMS. I think... If you're going to have something else monitor the battery for you that you rely on and you don't think about, it's probably got to be the most reliable, highest quality part of your bike. Because every every incident I've seen, every battery fire, every issue I've seen... BMS didn't has, stop. ...has been a cheap BMS. It didn't stop. It didn't stop and it's blown some cells and then that's going to run away. So at the moment I'm still manually BMSing this. I have got some BMS inside. Um, and I'm looking at the battery ones as well. Yeah, I work for battery. Oh yeah. But I'm not here yeah, trying to sell no, because... Yeah, yeah. I already did. I like. I'm like, man. You should look into bathroom, oh, man. Got the hookups. Uh, <laughs> but no, see, someone like bathroom, that's great. Like, you can trust them. But a no-name brand rebrand. Shenzhen, da da da. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm really worried to like put so much work into it and then have a a $15 piece of old PCB Crap. monitoring everything. So uh, yeah, I will get a BMS. Uh, but at the moment, so you, show us how you're doing charge at the moment, right? So you got like a little. Yeah, so thing here's, up. here's my charger. At the Technology, moment. man. Yeah. High, high tech, look. Charges like a remote control car. Oh yeah, it's a big RC toy, man. Yeah, I told you. <laughs> so you plug it here. What's the current you're charging here at the moment? I charge at um, 90 volts and between 15 and 20 amps, depending on which charges. So um, if I'm charging track side, I can uh, parallel two charges and I can charge the bike up between races in about half an hour. If you can charge it at 3C, then it becomes uh, a 20 minute charge. Um, and that for almost any race bike is more than enough. Um, so every time I've taken this out, I've been ruined. I've been totally wrecked before the bike. Show us the um, charger, man. I use an EMC 1200, handy to bring around. I can bring them track side, I can parallel them up. This is the charging and battery station here. Yeah, there's a lot of batteries here. So we've got a solar panel on the roof, or a, a three kilowatt solar system on the roof of the garage. We'll charge the bike, we'll charge the shed, we'll do everything. So actually, basically, here's a secret. <laughs> You can use this as the as the title. This bike is solar powered. Yeah. It charges from the sun. Every day I come home, I plug it in, and it charges. <laughs> technically not directly from the panels, but it charges from the batteries, uh, which are filled up it's by the sun bike. every day. So it's yeah. solar powered. There you go. Yeah, organic man. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the tire smoke's not as good. Oh, the dashboard! You didn't show the dashboard, man. Oh, Windows! Woo! Yeah, my bike runs Windows. Yeah, yeah well, Windows. What's 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 the what's the Windows version oh, of your bike? It's, it's Windows Mobile. The problem is sometimes 
if you haven't ridden it for a while, it'll have to do an update before you can go for a ride. So <laughs> it's funny that classic people, Windows. People man. make jokes about it, but it really does happen. You'll be riding along, and it'll want you to, to restart. Ah, oh, so yeah, hang on. So turn, turn it, it on. on. So it's short, what, what are you doing with the one? So it's free pre charge. Free charge resistor. Which is the ignition. Do, 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 do. Uh, controllers have capacitors. If you connect the battery to, a, say, a remote control car or a, um, a remote control toy, you'll sometimes see a little spark. And if it's a small thing, you get a little spark. But with something <laughs> like this, when it's running such high voltage, you'll have all the capacity of the battery trying to fill those capacitors in the controller. Sometimes you'll get an inrush current, um, which you don't want to do because it's, it's quite... Um, it could be thousand quite, a jolt, quite, quite a jolt to the circuitry. It could be so on this little button here. I've got a resistor that'll connect the battery to the controller um, very slowly. It'll gently connect them together, let the capacitors charge up it's slowly, gradually, and then you can turn the key on. I've got to remember that to push that. Um, it can use it just like a motorcycle. Exactly. Yeah. That's, <laughs> the, that's the, it. Doesn't make any noise. This is the noise okay. it makes when you arm the bike. Ready? That little clock, contactor, that little which is relay, means it's on. Yeah. So now I get a little warning here that says, "Warning, we're about to start," and then we're live. <laughs> okay. So that's on. That's armed. Uh, and then up here, I got my speedo, my battery voltage, the amps, the batteries are pulling, and then the amps, the motor is pulling there. Um, I can program it and change it. Also, there's my trip meter. How far have I done? 281 kilometers since I did my last reset. Chris Jones did the battery, Matt Eklund did the machining, um, mxstore.com.au did all the motorbike parts, uh, super cheap did all the tools. So Yeah, look, it got sponsored, man. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people have been involved in it and it's come out brilliant. Like this, I, I hesitate to say it, but there's nothing more to do with this one, so I'm gonna start on this one next. <laughs> all righty, let's cut short. Woo! Cheers, See you, man. See you ah, go have dinner. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so, uh, we're just going to see if the electric bike can do anything fun. <laughs> so, we got the electric bike working. Uh, I'm looking forward to a test ride tomorrow <laughs> when uh, it's a little bit more sunny and I can get some track time. <laughs> now he's gonna die.